Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to use our 3D mask that we've created with just one pattern piece to make these cool smile masks. And the idea here is it has clear plastic so that somebody can still see through. So if you're working with children or those who are hard of hearing, you need to show off your lips still. You can easily do it in this mask. Let's go down to the cutting table and you can see what we need to get started. First, we're going to need a cutting mat and some type of grid so that we can cut it out. And I like to use a rotary cutter with that. Of course, you might also want just some scissors to trim or to cut it out. You could trace and cut out with that. You will need a pattern piece, and I show you in our 3D mask video how to make that. But you could also use a template. So if you've actually bought the template from my company or created your own, uh, you can easily use that as well. We will need something to turn it with. That's always important. We want to point out some of the areas. I'm probably going to end up using a seam ripper at some point because I'll make mistakes, but also there's a part of this that does require a seam ripper, so make sure you have one. Of course, we need some fabric. So I'm gonna use this cute sort of uh, fish fabric for kids. And we need some clear plastic. Now, I want you to see that I'm actually, um, I bought this big amount of, of number uh, 10 gauge clear marine vinyl. And you can buy this at a lot of fabric stores. You want something that's just sort of soft and pliable that you can sew through. You can't use anything too thin. If you use something that's uh, much thinner than this, then it'll actually rip through, the holes rip through. So you need something with a decent gauge. All right, so um, let's get started as we talk about how this will go. This is using our standard sort of 3D mask that opens up to show, uh, to go over the, the nose piece. And of course, this is literally the same piece as, there's just one, two, three, and then a fourth one that has some extra tails that go over. What I've done though, for the, the smile mask that I created, you'll notice that we've changed it up a little bit. We're actually only gonna use one piece of the plastic, these two cover pieces, and then some edge pieces that are gonna go around along with the elastic. And here's a good example. I've already sort of started creating one. This is done with the clear plastic and we've added those two pieces on and the two side pieces that have been added have been out of the same material. You could, if you wanted, actually create the thing with just a small window going through it, and you'll see what this looks like. It would sort of go like this. Um, this is a lot of extra work, and I didn't really want to go through that for the one I'm creating, but you could easily, if you wanted to get a little more in-depth, you could create that version. So what we need to do is first is cut our clear plastic. I'm going to lay it down here. It might be a little hard to see, so you'll, you'll want to just uh, follow along. I'm going to create the size for my face, which is the larger larger size but you could come back in and make the smaller size by utilizing that point on the, uh, the template. And that's shown in our full 3D mask video. So I'm just gonna cut around this. Now, uh, you may notice that I am actually working from home today. And uh, that's because uh, there are people in my workshop and they're working making products you know, for our customers. So I'm here today and uh, this is a little bit of a shaky table, but it's okay. So hopefully you won't go falling off the table too much. And then just, uh, it's real easy because this is a good, um, we use at least 3 8 inch uh, acrylic to create that. And you'll notice there it is, it's a finish there. Now it's gonna sound a little strange, but I need to actually trim off um, 3 quarters of an inch off of each side of this. So this is actually a little larger because I'm gonna add those pieces on the side like you see here. And so we're gonna trim off three quarters of an inch. And the best way to do that I have found is to, is to lay it at the edge on our table. I'm gonna lay it at this, this mark right here, lay that side edge. And then instead of trying to find three quarters of an inch with my ruler, I'm just going to go oh, set the ruler three quarters of an inch on the ruler at on that same line. So I'm not trying to see the clear plastic through because it would be very difficult. So I've done that now and I'm trimming off. So now I've trimmed off a three quarter inch piece, which might be a little hard to see here. I've trimmed that off and then I'll flip to the other side and do the same thing. So a three quarter inch piece. This would be the same if you were doing the smaller size. You also want to cut off three quarters of an inch. So that's okay. So now I've got my clear plastic piece that is about three quarters of an inch smaller on each side than the actual template. 
The next thing I need to do is uh, prepare my fabric. So I'm going to take this fabric over to the ironing board and uh, iron it out real quick. Let's see if my iron is warm enough. It is. That's good. That has been ironed. Now that that's been ironed, I can cut two pieces out of it. And actually what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and fold this together, just like that. And I can get my two pieces right out of here. And they're gonna be the same size. Now here's the important part. If you were doing even the smaller one, if you're doing the one that's, that is um, that uses this line, this line on the, you still want to cut these pieces out of the larger size. And I'll explain to you in a minute why that is. Um, I'll show you in a minute. It's because we're actually going to be cutting these apart and um, they're going to get cut differently than you would make on the standard 3D mask. And we have to put a seam into them and it, it's, going to, it's going to take off uh, a half an inch. And so you still want a large enough amount. So now we've got that. Cut. This is two of them, and we put them right sides together. You see how we've got them right sides together. Without taking them apart, I'm actually going to cut them right in half. And the way we do that is I know that this is a three inch piece. So I'm going to line my one and a half inch mark up at that point at the bottom and the same point at the top to cut this directly in half. That'll cut this in half for me. And you'll see what I'm creating is these pieces. And it'll make sense in just a moment. So now I have these two with the right sides together, pieces made. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine now. And I'll bring you over there with me. Ooh, there you are. I'll have to adjust you just a little bit. It's kind of fun to do it this way at home. All right, I'm going to, um, I'm using a, a, a different color thread, but you might want the same kind of thread when you're doing it. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, what I told you wrong, I've already made my first mistake. Let me uh, get this out of here. I wanna use a really long stitch length. I wanna use a super long stitch length because we're just, we're really just basting this in. We're not actually trying to, um, we're not trying to keep this seam together the entire time. What we're trying to do is just create a way for us to iron in some pleats, some seams that'll get stitched together later. So I'm gonna go all the way up to the highest stitch length on my machine. And I'm just gonna basically baste this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll see it takes these huge, huge bites and in fact I'm gonna go really kind of slow because otherwise it would just fly through the machine all right so you'll see there it's done nice stitching along but it's very thin very very long stitches all right I'll do the other one the same way and I'm only going on the long flat side that we cut obviously not the two points I'm not doing the points okay and again I'm just gonna go nice and slow because it's really long. It's actually, on my machine, it's a six on the stitch length, and I normally use a two. So uh, that's quite long. All right, let's go over to the iron, and I will show you how to iron these in. Now, what we want to do here at the ironing board is we're going to want to go ahead and, and set that seam with the iron. And as anyone who knows and watches me long enough as I love steam, I'm going to go ahead and open it, leaving it flat. I'll go ahead and push it over with the iron. See, normally we would just fold this whole thing in half and use it like on a regular, on a regular one, on any of the others, and I'll show you. See here, on, on the others, we just... Um, 
we just folded it in half. But here, uh, on this version, we've got to be able to trap the plastic inside here, and that's going to let us get those two pieces back together. It'll make sense. So we've now done that. We have a nice, flat, open seam. And the next thing we need to do is flip it over, and then fold this completely back until it lines up along the edge and give it some love again with that iron or with that steam. Ooh. Steam love. Gotta love it. Steam love. And so you'll, now you'll notice what that done, that's done is it's put a seam right along that edge. See that? All right, let's do the other one just the exact same way. We set the seam. Set the seam really well, open it up, flatten that out, flip it over, bring that over back to where it matches everything. Oh, it's very hot too, by the way. You gotta have as best as fingers here if you're gonna do this. Yes, I love a good iron, but it means it does get really hot. All right, so now we have those two created with the two sets of uh, seams there. Let's go back over to our cutting table where we have way too much stuff. And this is where I'm gonna use my seam ripper. And because I used really long really long um, stitches in there, I can just come in with my seam ripper and find where that seam has gone together, put my seam ripper in and just sort of start to pull it out. And now you'll notice, and in fact I can kind of, if I really want to just tease it, I can pull it. And I'm not as worried about the threads, but if you are, you could just seam rip it with your seam ripper the entire way. And I'll just go ahead and pull out all these extra pieces of thread that are stuck in there. So now I basically have, without having to go by hand and try to turn over this tiny little quarter inch seam, I basically have turned over a quarter inch seam on each of those. So here's two sides. Now I want to keep those together because those go together, those have been sewn together. And I'll do the same thing on the other one. So I'm going to go back in there, find the seam. Right? And because it's such a long stitch length, it's really easy to pull this out. I mean, it's barely held together in there. Pull those apart. And again, if you were less, if you were more patient than I am, you could just seam rip the whole thing or very softly pull it apart. But yeah, I'm a little more impatient. The next thing we're going to need are some three and a half inch squares. Now, if you're doing it on the smaller size, you need about a three inch square, but you can look at it and see. I think actually it makes sense to just go ahead and use three and a half for both of them because you're gonna trim them up. So I need two three and a half inch squares, which is basically a, a seven inch by three inch piece. Three and a half inch piece, sorry. So if I come in here and find that with my ruler, it's gonna be fun to figure that out, doing this. Um, a three and a half inch piece. So let me put the edge at three and a half. Right, and I need at least seven. I'm just gonna do this strip because I know I'm gonna use it for something else. So I'm not worried about doing that. All right. Make sure you don't have your plastic underneath. You don't wanna cut it apart like I could be doing right now. And then I'm gonna get two three and a half inch pieces out of this. So let me get a three and a half inch piece here. And then I need another three and a half inch piece. All right. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach these two three and a half inch pieces to the sides of this large plastic piece and we'll do that at the sewing machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach these three and a half inch squares to the edges here. 
and uh, you could use a Teflon foot or a walking foot. I don't have that on my machine here. Uh, I'm just gonna be able to get through, no problem. I'm gonna line it up along the edge. You'll see along this edge here. And I know that I'm gonna have a tiny little bit of a tail that sticks over either side. And we need that because um, we need that to, when it opens for it to still be straight across. So I'll come in with my quarter inch seam allowance. And I need to make sure I lower my stitch length back down. Now, because I am using a, a good marine grade vinyl, I'm not worried about it cutting through there, but if you had some vinyl you were a little more concerned about, what you'd want to do is make sure that you um, use a longer stitch length so it doesn't cut through and, and cut holes in. All right, I've done one side, so I'm gonna come over and do the other side. And this fabric really doesn't have a direction, so I'm not as worried. If you had directional fabric, you'd wanna make sure that you were keeping it in the, the same directions on each side. So I line that up. And what this is creating is the sides of the mask as well as the parts that will flip over to encase our elastic. So there we go. What we've created are those pieces. And I'm gonna come back over to the cutting board. We've added those pieces on. I'm gonna come over to the cutting board and we're gonna put our other materials on. So there's our piece with the two tails that are coming off. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and line these up, one on one side. The other, of course, needs to go, that it matches, it needs to go underneath it. We'll place another one here at this end, and we'll put one underneath it on the other side. Now, I don't like to put a lot of pins through this plastic, so you could use clips if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use some pins because um, this is a prototype that I'm showing off and I'm not actually gonna use this to breathe through. But if you were and you were worried about that, then you'd wanna use some clips. I'm just gonna put a pin there and a pin on each side and then I'm gonna come in and add the stuff to the, the other side as it goes through. And here I just go through the fabrics rather than the, than the, than the, the um, clear vinyl, so I'm not as concerned. This one does have to go through the vinyl bone. And again, we're coming here to the edges. A little hard to see through my hand probably what I'm doing. And you, you know, I would normally say iron these flat, but you really can't because you're, you've got your, um, you've obviously got plastic in there. So I flip the whole thing over and I bring that piece back up that one to match and of course I'll put take the pin out the other side now and put it through all the pieces and then do the same thing on these two side ones now you'll notice that this fabric is a little bit high up on the sides here we could trim that off but uh, honestly we'll wait until we get to sewing it together and then we'll just naturally trim it anyway same one here. And you'll notice that those lines now line up on the back there and here because we're going to be um, sewing those back together eventually. So put this in. Oh, it looks so good. I actually really um, have enjoyed making this mask because uh, my brother works with um, an organization that does uh, services for uh, deaf people. They do video relay services. And so I talked to him about had he seen any good masks. And he actually said they had, that it was one of the things they were having a hard time finding was the ability for someone to do that. But they do a lot of their stuff video relay. And so it hasn't been as big of a deal because, you know, the people aren't together anyway. All right, so we have that pulled together and we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew it together. So let's look. Let's get down here to the machine and watch us put this together. So what I'm going to do is sew along that side, go right to the edge there where it starts. I will tack it on 
and uh, I'm gonna pull those pins out so I don't go over them. And again, I, I'm using a relatively longer stitch length. I'm using about a three millimeter on the machine, I think it is. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, I don't wanna go too, too tight, but I also don't wanna go, I don't wanna go super loose, cause you know, it's gotta pull it all together. Back up here at the end. And then I'll flip it around and do the same thing over to this side. Uh, you'll notice I've switched to a slightly different angle because the because the entire phone went off the side of my sewing machine. So this is the fun of uh, of doing a different setup than normal. Okay, you'll see I've added that on all of those sides. We now have both of those pieces put together. We'll come back over here to our table. So one of the things I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, trim off each side. And you could use a pair of scissors for this pretty easily if you wanted to. Just come in and, and go to that point. I'm just going to straighten it up. Or you could use your rotary cutter. We trim to that point. Um, if you feel comfortable using your rotary cutter, you could just come in. You're trimming off about a quarter of an inch on each one of those. That's really up to you. That's a decision you can make. But um, I go to that point and then turn it to be perpendicular. It might be easier if you draw it on. Maybe that's better for you. Um, you know, I, I don't get scared of sewing, so I just go for it. All right, now we're gonna need to open these up so we can create those parts on the mask that open up like this, right? We've got to open that up. So one of the things I want to do first is trim these points so that they're easier to, so that they're easier to turn. So I'll come in here and just sort of trim off the bulk in between there. See what I've done? I've kind of trimmed to that point, I'm trying to trim that a little bit. I'll show you again here at the bottom. Just trying to get some of that bulk out of there. There we go. So it's gonna point out more a little bit. So then we pull it open and get it nice and flat. And of course this you cannot use, you're not gonna be able to use your iron to do this. So I'm kind of pulling both sides and what you'll find is that you'll line back up. You see this stitching will line these two will line back up. So when you've done that, you might want to put a couple pins in it just to hold it together so that it's properly lined up. There we go. If you miss any threads like I just did, you can go pull them out as you're going. That's for the threads from when we pulled out the, see here when we pulled out that stitching earlier with our, with our seam ripper. So now these are together so you can go stitch them in just a moment. So we're going to take this to the machine in a moment and I'll do the other side doesn't matter which side you go to on this because um, they're going to flip either way. Just make sure this is nice and flat. We're sort of flattening that entire thing out so that they pull out evenly. And then I'll go back to my pins and pin along that. And make sure it's lining up. If it's not lining up, then you've done something wrong. You know, you've got a problem, which luckily mine is lining up. If I can get this, my pin in my hand the right way. Ah, perfect, okay. Now I'm using some black thread, which I think looks good with this gray and white fabric, but if you didn't, you should use something that coordinates. So back over to the sewing machine. You're getting a lot of moving around today, isn't that great? And I'm just gonna stitch along the edge of those. And I'm using, I'm using more than just the, um, I might be using the full width of the presser foot. I'm coming right in here to almost the inside so I get an edge stitch. And again, I should have pulled those pins out. Don't tell people I haven't. You should try to be better than me. So um, they call that do as I say and not as I do. So you'll see I've got that nice edge stitch now along the edge there, and I still have some threads stuck over from before. But I got that nice edge stitch done, and I'll go back here and do the same thing. Um, my 
bring you in a little bit so you can see. How nice is that? That looks so good. Nice and edge stitched. Now our next job is to come back. Oh, now that that's done, we're gonna come back over to the table here. We need to flip it to where we have the wrong sides of this fabric facing up. And then we're gonna flip these two pieces backward. Okay. And there is, that plastic is in there. So you've gotta fold it back enough to get all the way to the edge here, you see? See, if you don't, if you did it this way, you would get a bit of the paper, the fabric, but you need to push it all the way back. So we're gonna fold that all the way back until it lays down. And if you need to see it from this side to be able to do it correctly, you should do it from this side, but you're gonna flip it back over in just a minute. And I'll do the same on this bottom piece. Now you'll notice that, um, you'll notice that they don't meet in the middle. Now on your smaller one, if you're doing a, a smaller one for people who have smaller faces, but you use the larger size for that, the flaps, you will notice that they, they, they will get pretty close to fitting. But here you'll see they're off by a, a good half an inch. Well, that makes sense because we chopped a half an inch out by doing the cutting and doing that sewing in the middle. But I found that even on my face, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me at all, so I'm not bothered by that. All right, I'll pull these in now, flipped it all over, pull these in. If you need to put some pins, you can. So what I'll do here is, I actually think I'm gonna put a couple pins in here to hold this together so it doesn't roll out anymore. So I've got my seam done there, and I'll put a pin in it right there just to hold it together. Same thing on this side, because we are gonna take this to the iron and iron in those pleats. Um, we're going to iron in basically this sort of look. See down here, we're going to iron that in so we can fold it. Back to the other end. Make sure again that we're folding that because it's going to fold along the top. So we've actually folded in the seam there. Same thing here, we're going to fold it so that, because, and because that plastic in there is going to want to push out. So we want to make sure we actually really fold it. Now I'm going to go over to the iron and just quickly iron this, these pieces this way. Now remember, I'm not trying to iron any of the plastic, so I have to keep myself away from that plastic. I'm going to come in and make sure that, that this piece gets ironed in. And if you felt like you needed to pin that, you could certainly fold this in here and get a little bit of a fold in that. Same thing. And now what I'm gonna do also is fold this over here. See what I've done? And then fold it to match that line underneath. I wanna fold it to match this line right here. So I'm gonna fold that in now before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and iron this one in, because I can't iron it once it touches the plastic. Then I fold it in half to the plastic, hit a little bit of an iron on the edge there, and I can now move those pins to put all the fabric together. And just make sure you're not pinning all the way through the cutting board, which I just started to do. It's too funny. Okay, we put those pins all the way in Oh, look at that. Let me do the same thing on the other end so you can watch that one. Try not to talk as much through this one. Put in those pieces, fold in half basically to that stitching line, that line where the other pieces of fabric come over. Fold it over to meet where that fabric and the plastic touch. Just do the edge. My goodness, please just do the edge. Don't do any more. And then I'll put my pins back in. All right, so we've pinned all those parts together and now it's time to go 
down here and look at what we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this over and we're going to stitch all the way around the outer edges. All the way around the outer edges to hold the pieces in, in place. And then we'll come in and stitch these that we can put our elastic casing through. So let's go to the machine. Again, this would be a place if you wanted to use a matching thread, it would look very nice. Could easily do that. I'm going to start at the edge here and I'm going to do that same sort of edge stitch we talked about. <coughs> And I like to do it from the clear side because then I can kind of watch everything and make sure all the fabric is sticking down where it needs to. And I'm going all the way to the very edges here. This is just uniform. It's not really necessary on the short sides to go to the edge, but I think it just looks more uniform all the way around. Now one of the things you want to ask yourself when you're doing this is what kind of elastic do you want? I am really enjoying this sort of jersey elastic that I found online. Um, and I'm, I'll put a link in the description to it so in case you want to see it yourself. And I've gotten it in both black and white. But I kind of feel like with this particular one that I think I would like to use white so it matches the white in the uh, on the fish. Now you'll see on the other side, we still have those little flaps closed. They've been sort of starting to get entangled now as we go. So I'm gonna put the elastic in there. And to do that, I'm gonna open up this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this elastic that I found. Um, like I said, I bought this, I bought this online. It came with some nose wires actually, which you could decide you wanted to add into this if you felt like it. If you wanted to do that, you would have put the nose wire into this fabric before you closed it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a couple pieces of this and I think I'm gonna cut them about 10 inches for myself because after we loop them together, I will then add some little uh, silicone toggles to make it easier for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these two pieces 10 inches and I'll get back to the sewing machine in a second. So I actually decided to only cut these eight inches because I remembered that these are actually not, uh, they're actually really stretchy. So what I'll do is just create a loop with them. Um, go over about a half, uh, you know, half an inch or so. This is where a, a, a bodkin or, a, or some type of, you could actually use a pair of scissors or if you needed to. All right, so I've got that little loop put together there and I'll create another one real quick. So I thought I'd give you a little different view of putting these in because what we need to do is make sure that the, the loops go in to these edges. So I'm gonna pull up at each side and put in the loops for the elastic. But the way I'm gonna put these elastic loops in is I don't wanna sew over the actual elastic. I wanna be able to make the loops um, be um, able to move freely because I may decide to, you know, put in different elastic at some point. So I put that underneath and I'm going to go basically up here to the top, back stitch a little and just go right along the edge of that. And so now you see I've trapped that elastic in there and I'll come along and trim my threads in a minute. Same thing on this side, I will. Again, not, not stitching over the actual elastic. And you'll see on the other side, it went through each of the other two points. So now, there you go. All right, so I've created that particular in here. And, and you'll notice that it's got the, the two elastic sides on it. And what happens is this inside lifts up for my nose and the other lifts down for my chin. So I put this on. Haven't worn this one yet, brand new. And look at that. It's actually, actually really close to being tight enough by cutting those eight inches for my face. Now you'll notice that this is um, fogging up a little. 
On the other one that I that I wore, you'll notice that it didn't fog up when I put it on my face, and uh, and that's because I took a little bit of dishwashing liquid and wiped it on the inside, and then I wiped it completely back back out, but I didn't like wash it out. And what the dishwashing liquid did, it created like a film, so it doesn't it doesn't fog up as much, and in fact. Um, Surprisingly, that's been like three days ago, and it's still working beautifully. Now, um, it really depends upon, you know, if you want to use that or some kind of other anti-fogging material. But that is your 3D smile mask. How cool is that? You imagine working with kids? You can show off your face, and people don't have to miss you. Hey, if you liked this video and you want to see others like it, please subscribe to the channel. Please support us with a like or a thumbs up on the video. You can also click the bell icon to be notified whenever I make a new video. Again, my name is Tim Totten. Thank you for joining us on the channel today. And until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now.